How cyber secure is your property exchange? A question that's becoming more and more important these days with cyber crime on the, on the rise. And we have joining us with today, uh, Lee Bailey, a general manager from Secure Exchange. Hello, Lee, welcome. Welcome. Hey guys, good to see you again. Good to, a little see, you while. Again, really. good to see you. So, uh, Lee, tell us a little bit more about Secure Exchange. What is it, sorry, what, Secure Exchange? What is it? Yeah, Secure Exchange. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, Secure Exchange, I guess the best way I, when I'm talking to people is I explain it as a secure, uh, flexible environment that enables any parties in a the sale of a property to yeah. come together in a secure environment. Um, it provides efficiencies because you can all have visibility across that transaction. Um, enables um, agents to request information securely from their clients and vice versa, the agent can share information with the clients and it's all done within a secure environment. So the challenge we have in today's society is we all send a lot of information out and generally speaking, that's done via email. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the time, particularly with working at home at the moment, it's not secure. Um, you know, depending on how up to date people's, uh, um, I guess, security is on their system, their hardware, their software, is really dependent on which eyes are watching those transactions occur. So it's an environment that brings everyone into a secure uh, one room almost so that they can share information. And especially when you are dealing with large amounts of funds as well. So it's, it's a big transaction. So you, mm. you want to make sure it's, it's watertight. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, every property just about these days is online. We want yeah. to get that pub publicity. We want to get the uh, awareness about that property being sold. But yeah. that comes with some unwanted awareness as well. Yeah. Um, and that's where they obviously uh, cyber criminals can watch to see what transactions are occurring. Mm. Yeah. And targeting and those. So, and cyber crime, it's very real right now. We see it all the time in the news, papers, everything. So mm. it's, people it's, have it's more time of, these days. <laughs> that's uh, what they're targeting. You know, it, it, it's quite scary. Um, and, you know, I won't go into all the facts and figures because I spend up far too much of my time looking at this. Mm. Um, yeah. But if I, I mean, just took about the first six months of this year compared mm. to last year. There were about approximately 27,000 uh, cyber crimes reported to the Australian Cyber uh, Security Centre. So they run a, a, an element, a reporting system called ScamWatch. Um, that was up 50% on 2020. Um, but the sophistication of those hacks and those, that cyber crime has increased just, I mean, the, the, the actual value that's been lost is up to about 125 million. And that's actually about 125, sorry, it's up to 27 million. That's up to 125% increase on the same period last year. So what wow. we're seeing is cyber criminals are getting more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the story we all have heard a few times, your uncle based somewhere around the world has passed away and just you need to log on to this site and get paid the inheritance. Yeah. It's not that anymore. It's, it's your KO subscription has lapsed. It's your Spotify has lapsed. All those products that we all have and we jump online and we try to rectify that drop a password in, and then if there's been a phishing attack um, or business email compromise, someone's watching your keystrokes at that stage. Yeah. Yeah, wow, wow. that's scary. I know. Just... So I know buying a property should be enjoyable. So <laughs> but it makes it. Come, come in the way. <laughs> so so to, to make it relevant to those, say, for example, if we've got buyers that are watching right now, what, what are the risks associated with them? Where, um, what, what would happen? What, what could possibly go wrong from a purchase point of view, property transaction point of view? Well, obviously, I know yourselves, you, you use our product, which is why, and thank yeah. you again for the opportunity to come today and talk. Um, and you use that secure platform to share your trust account details if someone was paying a deposit. Hmm. But a very real scenario, and this happens quite often, is that people still share their trust account details for the purpose of the deposit being paid via email. Hmm. And if you think about it, I'm sat there and I may have been able to intercept um, your, your client, the purchaser, I may have be able to have intercepted that email and all I've literally got to do is have the brand of the real estate agent. It looks like the real estate agent. It's got the names. And all I've changed is the trust account details. Yeah. Wow. So to the consumer, and you're saying you've got to get the deposit in now because if you don't, you're going to miss this. And then basically it's the property could come off the market or someone else is there. The consumer doesn't hesitate. They run to the bank with the bit of paper they printed off, which is an email. They basically pay that. And lo and behold, that money, and particularly in today's market, which could be anything upwards of you know $100,000, it's generally gone. Wow. Um, and then it's the recovery set. It's the instant report piece there where, okay, well, whose fault was it? And mm. the reality is, you know, I know yourselves and you've got pretty good processes in place, but it's really protecting the consumer. Mm. And the agent does have that responsibility to protect the consumer. But I think the consumer should also now be thinking to say, 
okay, actually, I'd like to get receive your trust account details in a different manner other than email. Um, yeah. And obviously, that's where, you know, yourselves, you put that process in place to use Secure Exchange. To use yeah. that, absolutely. Wow. So basically, just to, uh, to provide an example, a purchaser is requesting the, uh, the details. So the agent is emailing the trust account digits, which are changing uh, until by the time it reaches the yeah. consumer, it changes and they've relied on the wrong information. The agent's done the right thing by providing the right information, but the information that the consumer has received yeah. is incorrect. And as a result, they have- Which is not the really loss. the fault of the consumer as well. So yeah. Exactly. That's it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's, like all, all good, we, 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 good ideas, you have to solve a genuine problem, I guess. That's how yeah. the really secure exchange came about. Mm -hmm. Actually, someone within our business mm -hmm. um, had two emails from an agency when they were buying a property. And they're exactly the same apart from the digits have been changed. And they realized and called, let's say, Darren. And they called Darren and he's like, yeah, yeah no, I've sent you it. Just pay it away. And he said, no, you're missing the point. I've got two emails. And by the time they looked at it, it was the second one was fraudulent. Well, someone had intercepted and the agency wasn't even aware that someone yeah. was basically in that platform yeah so it is Absolutely. very real then yep. yeah mm -hmm. so go. how does uh so for those that don't know how exactly does secure exchange work so it's a platform where agents and conveyances and purchases come, come in into one part. Yeah. yeah that's it um then thank you uh, uh and well you've done a great job of explaining that so <laughs> it's um it is we tried to create a uh, a very simple environment um so uh all parties in a transaction can come to one environment and they can actually transact and share information there. And in that, you know, I, I've been doing this. I, I ran a conveyancing business before joining um, InfoTrack and Secure Exchange. Yeah. And I, I'd forgotten how hard it was in buying and selling property. And I it bought a block of land last year. And it was just, you know, going back and forth between different parties. And as I said earlier, rushing to get things done, which we all have to do. Emails are flying everywhere. So, in Secure Exchange, you're able to bring that into a single environment, share the information. Once the purchaser has been found with the purchaser's lawyer, the vendor's lawyer is then able to communicate as well. We have a digital signing functionality in Secure Exchange as well. And obviously the, uh, the umbrella piece there is it's the secure environment. So people can feel confident that they can share information within Secure Exchange. We use multi-factor authentication. We verify trust accounts. We use encryption, all of the elements that basically stop prying eyes from seeing what's going on in order to protect all the parties in that transaction. And we are that confident in the product that we have. We do actually have a million dollar guarantee on transactions. So if you're paying a, a deposit and um, up to a million dollars, or if yep. you're paying funds up to a million dollars, we'll guarantee if that information is communicated via secure exchange, we'll protect yep. that. Wow. Wow. So the, basically the consumer and, and the vendor and the agent, they all got confidence uh, in this product at the end of the day. So your funds are in safe hands when you exchange and, and it. That's, and that's it. So you're not having the email go out and someone potentially changing it because you yeah. as the consumer are invited into the environment yeah. and they're, and the, you know, you, you're, you're given multi-factor authentication. Three yeah. years ago, that was a challenge for people. Now yeah. most banks ask you to get, you know, I think that's where you get the, the digits are sent to you, you get a text message, you yeah. put it in. People are used to using that um, mm. and we're able to do that. And it's an extra layer of protection, which you definitely need in, in, in a big transaction. Mm. Uh, and yeah, uh, put simply in the analogy I often use, it's like home insurance. Um, mm. You know, and, and if you're, you're, you're going along or, or to some degree, if you're a, a burglar and you're going along and someone's taking the steps to put a security screen on a front door and they've got a back to base alarm system, they've got a dog, you generally go on to the next house that you're going to burgle I, I would assume i don't have experience by the way I'm just <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but you know and your insurer looks at that and says your insurance won't be as much if you're doing that yeah um cyber criminals operate very similar they'll look at the easy targets they'll look at the people yeah. and the businesses that don't have the right protection in place yeah. and they'll then ultimately attack those businesses yeah. Mm. Wow. So talking about the business um, side of things, what else, what, what can be done um, other, like from the agent's point of view, uh, what other factors can be considered to be able to make their um, dealing secure? Yeah, and, and that's a, you know, a, a great question. And I think, yeah, even if I was to sort of take my secure exchange hat off, I would be saying in today's society and as an agent, you need to, your, your, your basic, your brand is built on your reputation. So you can't afford for something to occur uh, where you have lost a, a buyer's deposit or a transaction it has fallen over because the appropriate steps haven't been taken. Um, mm. Not all of us are lucky to have an IT person in our office, but I would encourage everyone to make sure their um, hardware and their software patches are up to date. 
So we see that quite often, it says install, you know, there's a, and Microsoft do a lot of this for us now, but making sure that is up to date and you've got the appropriate uh, virus protection packages in place. Hmm. Um, a password policy, or if you're a consumer using a strong password, hmm. um, you know, I'm guilty of the same. Mine is used across a few different, uh, uh, you know, uh, different uh, packages and logins, but making that a strong password. So when you look at that, it should be eight digits. It should have different characters, capitals, lowercase numbers in it as well. It gets hard, we all know that, but you're better to take that and take a few more minutes to put that in place than spend time recovering hundreds and potentially, uh, sorry, thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, multi-factor authentication, that, that's not that hard to put in place anymore. You know, to have a practice where if you're e emailing out confidential details and someone needs to log in, they have that secondary step. So we call it two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. Um, uh, using something such as uh, you know a Mindcast or a, a tool that basically protects your emails, so they're able to basically put out. So if you've got the uh, Netflix password change coming to your email, it generally something like a Mindcast will stop that from current coming in. So it's like perimeter fencing around your your system, and then using a secure platform such as Secure Exchange. We're not the only one. There are other providers, not necessarily in in our space in the, the real estate and legal space. But using something, and if you just looked at though, even at three of those five things, mm -hmm. you're going to be, you know, 100% further ahead than other businesses in uh, in Australia right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. And even from a contract point of view, obviously the uh, the connection with InfoTrack, the ability to be able to have contracts prepared at a quicker pace. Let's talk a little bit more about that. From yeah. So say, for example, if we have solicitors that are watching at the moment, uh, what's the benefit from their point of view when they do join and they'll be able to generate those documents quicker? Yeah, uh, and um, look, th there's a couple of parts that one is just the sharing of the documents. You know, it, it still is the case. Uh, again, I used to run a, a law firm for a while. It, the, the, the mail comes in or the emails come in, you sit there, someone goes through them, then allocates that out. In Secure Exchange, you're getting immediate access to that. We've built the system so that the contract, once it's signed or whilst it's being prepared, can be shared with all the parties. So the lawyer, if it's a draft contract for lifting purposes, can share that with the agent straight away and the vendor has access to that too. And that's literally can be done. We're, we're talking, we believe we've got the fastest solution in the market. Then the other part of that is if you were sat down with your vendor and they said, yeah, we're going to go with you. We have built in the Secure Exchange platform the ability to request the contract of sale from your lawyer or conveyancer immediately through the platform. And how agents are using that right now is the vendor will get a questionnaire, six questions. It's quite straightforward to go through. Mm -hmm. Is there a tenant? Is there a swimming pool? Are you registered for uh, Australian tax purposes? Agents complete that with the vendor, all done on, on the phone. It's all very uh, mobile friendly. And then that information is sent to the lawyer or conveyancer. And in the background, we've put some smarts in place with InfoTrack where we start the process of ordering different bits and pieces. So what we're doing at that point is we're going, we know that property, we know we can get hold of the title. Let's at least start that process, provide that to the lawyer and conveyancer. And then hopefully as the agent, you're getting that contract back so you can get the property up and listed within 48 hours. Wow. It's all creating the urgency and the speed. Yeah. And sometimes the speed can win you the deal as well. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. and times like this yeah. where we have an abundance of buyers, if you've got yeah. a, a buyer ready to go yeah. uh, and just waiting for those contracts, that makes it all so much easier. Yeah. It's just these little one percent as they add up at the end of the day. Yeah. That's it. And it's just that that making that difference and being able to offer that as part of your solution. It's the security, it's the speed with which you can operate. And we do have built in within in, uh, within Secure Exchange is the, the DocuSign functionality. So you're actually able to go, well, I can get everyone to sign this right now. Mm -hmm. Or you're able to go, one party can sign it in wet, a wet signature if you're in front of them. Obviously, in New South Wales right now, it's a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other party could also sign that um, electronically through the Secure Exchange platform. Mm -hmm. So we try to account for as many different sort of variables as we can. Um, and like yourselves, we get some really good feedback from people and we're able to build on that. Um, we are part of the InfoTrack group. Um, and, you know, we, we've been around for two years now, Secure Exchange. And We've got about uh, 1,500 real estate agents that have used the platform and about 4,500 lawyers and conveyances. Um, and, and what we're seeing is enabling this network of communication in a secure environment really does prove for a better consumer journey. Because mm -hmm. the consumer is going, I'm going to one area. I can now see my real estate agent has actually already communicated with my lawyer. That's great. Mm -hmm. and, and as we know, in the sort of this professional space in, in property, in property transactions, Word of mouth is amazing. Someone comes out of that and goes, wow, you guys just made it so easy for me. 
the lawyer was talking with the agent. I actually just needed to jump in and sign things, but they seemed to have it all through a secure environment. Then, you know, you guys and the lawyers, everyone walks away looking like they've done a great job. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to say hello to a few people coming on. So do feel free to ask any questions while you uh, while we are live. And even if afterwards, if you have think of anything, more than happy to have them answered for you. So Aurora Preeth has come on hello, saying hello. And Rebecca, lovely to see you guys here. Any final words? Anything else that we've missed? Um, before we finish I think we've off? Covered, covered a lot of the points. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add, Lee? Um, I get one of the questions that you know I, I do get uh, asked a little bit is you know is this real real or is it fear mongering um, and I, I'm a I'm a big believer that you know and uh, we just need to look at the situation we are in with COVID fear mongering is not cool no one should be doing it it's not going to help anyone yeah. um, what I will say that this is something that is not going to go away cyber criminal activity is going to continue to grow the reality of that is um, you know. We used to have fraud where someone would try to impersonate someone and do a fake driver's license and walk into a bank. Um, they don't even need to do that anymore. They can do this online. Our, our world is developing into a digital evolution. We are moving in that di digital evolution. And cyber criminals will start to take advantage of those. But we shouldn't be afraid of it. We should just put mechanics in place to protect ourselves, our businesses and our clients. Um, and they are available. Um, but you know the, the part that I, I don't always like to say, but I, I do to make this real, it, it, it isn't a uh, if anymore, it is a when. It's All a of our business will be impacted. Yeah. Um, I, I've stood in rooms and you guys have been with me at times and I kind of do the straw poll of how many people believe they have been impacted by a scam and most people in the room pick their hands up. Mm -hmm. and then I ask about how many have reported it and it's like probably five to 10%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just don't. So what we've got to do now is almost say, it's okay for this to happen. You shouldn't be embarrassed about it as long as you're we're building an awareness of it. And in our businesses and part of Secure Exchange, we offer cybersecurity training, you know, so businesses can start to put practices in place to protect them um, because it, it's not going to go away. We just have to get better than how better and quicker than how the criminals are acting. Um, and Secure Exchange can really offer a lot of the, the I guess, the requirements around that. One of the other things that comes up from that topic is the uh, insurance. Cyber insurance is, is becoming increasingly... Uh, you know, uh, difficult to understand because there's so many things. So what is your take on that? And what are some of the basics that you must have when you are getting cyber insurance? Uh, uh, absolutely. So um, really good point, uh, Amal. And I actually reached out to someone this morning. So we're actually doing some work with Aon Insurance, which yes. who I know operate quite a bit in the, um, the real estate sector. Yeah. Um, we are building a offering and we, we've done a lot of, and I know I'm, I'm talking majority now to, to New South Wales people, but We've been doing a lot of work with the REIQ up here in Queensland. Uh, and the CEO of REIQ has actually been on some zone events and saying you shouldn't be sharing information, secure information via email. Secure Exchange is an alternative for that. Aon Insurance are now putting together a, a package that they're taking to the underwriters to say, we believe if someone uses, meets these five criteria, so multi-factor authentication, encryption, use secure platforms such as Secure Exchange, they should not be penalized for the increase in their cyber insurance that mm -hmm. others are seeing. Because again, as my example about the home insurance, they've taken appropriate measures and put in place. Um, but in those conversations, people have been saying to me that they believe that cyber insurance uh, will be more prominent, prominent sorry, than uh, professional indemnity insurance in the coming years. Oh, yeah. Just mm -hmm. because it's becoming such a serious uh, aspect. So taking the, I guess, uh, proactive measures now to protect yourself and your business is not only a reputational piece that can protect yourselves and your clients, but also a commercial piece that may actually eventuate in saving you money through your insurance policies that you ha may have with different insurers. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. future-proofing your business here. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Well, there you go. Well, thank you so much for your insightful advice there. There's a lot, lots to take on. And I think even for us, uh, we're not only sales, we're also doing this for our landlords as well. So when uh, new landlords are coming on, uh, we're getting their information through there. So great, uh, great product for anyone else. Uh, we will be providing the details of Secure Exchange in the comments here as well for anyone that wants to see more. Feel free to ask any other questions uh, afterwards. Happy to answer them uh, afterwards as well. Thank you very much for your time, Lee. And we will see you guys next time. See you later. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Thank All you. Right.